as an application of the CLO theorems, let's consider finite groups of order 12. For this part, we'll consider the abelian cases and the alternating group on four letters. Now, G is a finite group, order of G is equal to 12. We state the parts of the CLO theorems that we're going to use. So if P is a prime that divides the order of the group, we assume P of the n divides the order of the group, where n is as large as can be. Then there exists a subgroup of order P to the n. Okay, we call any subgroup of this order a CLO P subgroup, and we denote the generic one by H sub P. If there's more than one, then all CLO P subgroups are conjugate to one another. That means they all have the same isomorphism type. If I want to count the number of CLOP subgroups. Okay, we denote the number by n sub p. The formula is given by the order of the group divided by the order of the normalizer of h sub p. Now, because h sub p is a subgroup of its normalizer, we're dividing by p to the n here, so p does not divide n sub p. With that, n sub p is restricted by the following three rules. N sub P divides the order of the group, P does not divide N sub P, and N sub P is congruent to one modulo P. Now, if the order of the group is equal to 12, we have two prime divisors, two and three, which means we can have for N sub three, one or four, for N sub two, one or three. Now, for the CLO three subgroups, the order is equal to 3, which means they're all isomorphic to Z mod 3. For the CLO2 subgroups, they all have order 4, so they're either all isomorphic to Z mod 2 cross Z mod 2, or all isomorphic to Z mod 4. Note, all of our CLO P's are abelian subgroups. Now, if I consider the case where n sub 2 equals n sub 3 is equal to 1, if we conjugate any CLO P subgroup, we get another one back. If there's only one, that means our CLO P is normal. So I have H2 is normal in G, H3 is normal in G. If we consider the orders of elements, the intersection of a CLO 2 with a CLO 3 is the identity element, and we can show that our group is going to be a direct product of an H2 with an H3. Because the factors are abelian, that means our group is abelian. By the fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups, G is isomorphic to either Z mod 12 or Z mod 2 cross Z mod 6. If we consider non-abelian groups of order 12, we first want to rule out the case where we have N sub 3 equal to 4, N sub 2 equal to 3. If we take any two CLO3 subgroups, because they're isomorphic to Z mod 3, they either intersect in the identity or they're equal. So if we remove the identity element from each CLO3, we're going to have 4 times 2 equal to 8 elements of order 3. That leaves room for a unique CLO2 subgroup with 4 elements. That means N sub 2 is equal to 1 and our H sub 2 is normal in the group. Now, there's only going to be one group up to isomorphism with N sub 3 equal to 4 and N sub 2 equal to 1. That group is the alternating group on four letters. So, if we take the symmetric group on four letters, A4 is just going to consist of the subgroup of even permutations. If we list all of these, we note we have one element of order one, eight elements of order three, three elements of order two. So you'll note we have no elements of order four, six, or 12. Now, you'll see here, I only have three elements of order two. So when we put the identity in, it's gonna give us a unique subgroup of order four. So H2 is gonna be isomorphic to a Z2 cross Z2. It's normal in our group, so we have n sub 2 equal to 1. 
If I consider elements of order three, okay, we have eight of these. So we could pair each element with its inverse, put the identity in, that gives us a seal of three. So we have four of those. Now, if I want to compute the order of the normalizer of an H3, okay, our rule says n sub three is equal to the order of the group divided by the order of the normalizer of H3. So the order of our normalizer is three, which means H3 is equal to its normalizer. Finally, because H3 is equal to its normalizer, there are no subgroups of order six. So if I take an element of order two, an element of order three, those two elements are gonna generate all of our A4. Let's go in the other direction. So we'll suppose the order of G is 12, n sub three is equal to four, n sub two is equal to one, and we wanna show that G is isomorphic to A4. For the isomorphism, we need to find four objects to permute. For that, we can use our CLO3 subgroups. So let's call those H1, H2, H3, and H4. If we want to permute these, I could take a group element and conjugate. So if we conjugate a CLO3, we get back another CLO3. If I want to undo that map, I conjugate by G inverse. So for each group element, we're going to get a permutation on these four objects. So that gives us a map sigma from G into S4, symmetric group on four letters. Now, to get the isomorphism here, we need to show a few things. First, sigma is a homomorphism, so that's straightforward. Then I want to show that the kernel of sigma is equal to the identity. That gives us an injective homomorphism and for the isomorphism, all we would need to show is that the image is equal to A4 and S4. Now, to show that the kernel of sigma is the identity, let's suppose we have a G in the kernel. That means if I conjugate any CLO3 by that G, we get back the same CLO3. Now, to make use of that, let's note from before with our counting trick, G has no elements of order six. That means the normalizer of a CLO3 is either your CLO3 or an S3, symmetric group on three letters, that contains your CLO3. If we're in the first case, then the kernel of sigma is gonna be the identity. So if we have a G in the kernel, that means this G is gonna be in the normalizer of each HI. But if we just consider two of them, okay, if I take the intersection of HI and HJ, where they're both isomorphic to a Z3, that intersection has to be the identity. So that shows that G is equal to E. That gives me an injective homomorphism from G into S4. We note G is gonna contain eight elements of order three, which are all the elements of order three in S4. Now, the elements of order three and S4 generate an A4. Since we're starting with a group of order 12, we're gonna hit all of A4 on this side. So that gives us our isomorphism. For the other case, we suppose the normalizer of a seal of three is an S3. We note the three element subgroup of the S3 is just the seal of three. We also note because the CLO threes are all conjugate, the normalizers are all conjugate also. So each normalizer here is an S3. Now, if G is in the kernel of sigma, G is gonna be in each of the normalizers for the CLO threes. If I take the intersection of two of them, that's gonna be a subgroup of an S3. So it's either the identity, everything, a two element group or a three element group. Now, it can't be a three element subgroup because we know HI and HJ intersect only in the identity. If we take the intersection of four of them, okay, we're either gonna have identity or a two element group. So let's suppose we have the kernel of sigma is a two element group. Now recall, 
kernel homomorphisms are always normal subgroups. So I can consider the quotient group. Because G has 12 elements, this quotient is going to have six elements, which means the quotient is either a Z mod 6 or an S3. If I want to consider elements of order 2, let's consider our CELO2 modded out by the kernel. This has four elements. So if we mod out, we're going to have a Z mod 2. And that accounts for all elements of order 2 in our quotient group. So we have a unique element of order 2. S3 has three elements of order 2. So that means our quotient must be a Z mod 6. Now, that means the quotient has an element of order 6. If we take its inverse image under our quotient map, inverse image has either order 6 or order 12. If it's an element of order 12, it's squares of order 6. That means our group has an element of order 6, and that's a contradiction to our counting argument. So that means the kernel of sigma is equal to the identity element, and then we finish as we did in the previous case.